better thoughts what happened to the skirting board when I come to watch that. Well, you can. Wall's finished. Um, I'm now ready to do the skirting board. Um, I'll just show you the stuff I'm going to use. First of all, you've got to do the sanding. So, starting with the most important one is a dust mask. Always wear a dust mask if you can. Second is a pair of gloves. When you're doing loads of sanding, it really does hurt your fingers by the end of the day if you're not wearing gloves. It takes the skin off. Um, sandpaper. Now, I've got some P180 there. Now that's okay for sanding over the undercoat. Um, and possibly smoothing off walls and things like that. Sometimes you can use um, too smooth of a sandpaper for sanding woodwork and you're not keying it enough so the undercoat has a good grip. So basically I've got some P60 but it's actually been used so it's a lot smoother, um, but it's still got a little bit of grit in it. So when I sand the first, when I do the first sand, I actually put uh, a bit of um, scratch into the woodwork, only slightly, and it's all kept in the same direction. And then when you come to undercoat, the undercoat floods into that, and it gets a good grip. And then you can smooth off the undercoat for your finished coat. Right. Going on to your brushes. You can see the difference there in the bristle length. Now, this, that's got to the point now where it's really only good for oil gloss and possibly oil undercoat. That's what you need for water-based paints. You need a nice bristle. You can use synthetic brushes. Not a problem using them. But I, I like to use the uh, pure bristle. Um, I've also got a two inch. But because I'm doing a skirting board, the chances of me needing that are slim. Um, it depends how deep your skirting board is and what type of paint you're using. Um, sometimes I find a one inch can hold a lot of paint and you can get a better um, finish on the paint laying it off. Shoot, right, that's the brushes. Dust brush, obviously for dusting off. I've got a couple of paint kettles. And the stirring stick. This is the undercoat I'm using. That's a quick dry and water based undercoat. There's loads of brands on the market. Um, there's some good ones. That's quite reasonable in price. And it's, uh, it's not bad, it's from Dulux that. Crown do some good ones. McPhee, you know, there's quite a lot of good water based paints out there now. Leyland, this is what I'm using. And I find this quite good, reasonable in price. It's got a good sheen on it. And it also, you know, I don't find it dries that quick on you and doesn't flash as much as other uh, water-based glosses. I've also got a bucket of water. Damp cloth. So you can wipe any mess up. Now, with your brushes, and they've not been used for a few days and they're dry. Stand them in the water for 10 minutes. Allow that water to soak into the bristles. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the sanding bit. Thought I would show you some of the sanding. So, taking some of this warm P60, you can fold it. You don't need a massive piece. It's sometimes easier to use a small piece, especially on skirting boards and round bits of moulding. 
I'm going to start on the top edge. You want to keep off the wall. You don't want to be touching that at all, really. And you can use your fingers as a guide on the skirting. And keep it nice and straight. And then once you're happy with the top of the skirting, you can move on to the next edge. Basically work down like that. Skirt the uh, carpet. Now that is giving a perfect key to the uh, old paint for the new paint. That's what you want. Dust that off, and that's ready for its undercoat. Once you've sanded it down. Dust it off again. Then using your vacuum clean, you can clean that edge. But as you go in, you can use a clean piece of sandpaper and just, as you vacuum, as you're using it, just rub it lower with that and just vacuum it up. It all helps on getting rid of any of the fluff of the carpet and then once you've done that I usually check along it because sometimes you get little strands coming up of carpet and I'll get a pair of scissors and I'll cut them off and just show you what I mean you can just see two there so just trim them off as easy as that ready for the undercoat now always make sure you give it a good stir up that's highly important guys. and then strain it if you need to and what I usually do is I'll start with it and see how it's working and then if I need to add a little bit of uh, water to it I will do and just thin it out a little bit so it uh, glides a bit better same again just like oil paint work your brush in don't want to be starting with a dry brush. Now, the reason I start with my paint neat and see how it goes is because the opacity of the paint, if you thin it, you're actually just weakening the opacity of the paint. So, right, so we're ready there. Starting on the top of the skirting board, but keeping away from the wall as your first touch. Just glide it along till you see the paint touching into the corner of the wall. It's not easy, but just take your time because there's no rush. And if you do touch the wall, you can always touch it up when the undercoat's dry. Now, take a section of the top along. You'll always find paint wants to creep round a little bit because it's the capillary action of the paint into corners. So you're better off allowing it to do that than uh, not. And then start working down. Always making sure you're laying off your paint and leaving no thick edges on corners. A little bit there. And I'm working down towards the skirting board.
See, if I was using a two inch now, there's no way I'd be able to lay it off as neat. And that's the trick to getting a really good finish, is to lay it off really neat. So when it comes down to near the carpet, you're always just working up to it. You never go straight up to it straight away. You let that paint on the bristles just slowly work down. Always laying off the paint. Closing up them brush marks. Perfect. So that's the undercoat on now. Um, you'll easily be able to tell when it's dry because it'll just go to a dull finish. Now, sometimes you may, where the carpet is, have to put down masking tape. It all depends on your carpet and how it sits against the uh, skirting board. If it gets, I'll show you with this out. If it gets to the skirting board and your carpet bows down, then you're going to have to put masking tape along because to try and get your paint down to the bottom of the skirting board is really difficult and you end up touching the carpet on the bow. So if it's like that, you'll end up needing masking tape. If it's like that, it's not too bad. The undercoat's dry now. It needs another sand before you can gloss it. But nothing as harsh as what you used in the beginning. So for this top edge, I'm going to be using the P180. Because I don't want to touch the wall again. It only needs a light sand. And then you can just do that little edge there. And then you can turn to your sponge pad for the rest of it. Makes it a lot easier. And then you can finish off with your P180 along the bottom. There you go. Another dust off. Again, with your gloss, most important thing, stir it up. Make sure you go right to the bottom. using the pure bristle one inch brush again the same one I use for the undercoat just washed it out pour some into your kettle So starting on that top edge, don't want to be going straight up to the wall. Just start a little bit away and then work the paint up to it. to that bottom bit there. The bold edge. Just do a little bit more of this.
always trying to lay off any edges and shut up the brush marks that's what you do when you lay it off I did that because I was looking at the camera and trying to work out how much you're seeing. So usually you won't touch it. I use my finger on the floor as a guide. Right. So again, starting that top edge, halfway into it, and then work up to the wall. There's never any rush doing this, it's just sit back, take time, and you'll find you'll actually do it quicker. Because if you try and rush it, it always takes longer. There you go, I'll show you the finish now. All finished. All finished. What I'll do is I'll let it dry off and then I'll show you how good the sheen is on the gloss. Well, it's not perfectly dry because it takes, still takes a while to cure. Um, well, yeah, it's got a decent sheen on that. 